Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here on our brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Shambir today. They gonna go out today, see if things came out, see if things are on sale today. Today though, the only really big release that comes out is Escape Plan, The Extractors, which is the third film in the Escape Plan series. Other than that though, I don't think there's really too many other things, but since it's the first Tuesday of the month though, uh, Walmart changed out the actual section, so they should have in a whole bunch of brand new stuff as well, like new indie horror films, comedies, all that kind of stuff. So hopefully I don't have to go to a whole bunch of different, you know, Walmarts to find the stuff, but we shall see. Also though, the end of this video is gonna a whole bunch of brand new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I received to, uh, to review and talk about for you guys. So definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video. Also, leave me comments below, you know, what you guys thought of the DVDs and Blu-rays that I reviewed, if you guys have seen any of them, also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. But in here though, they like remodeled the, th the section and look at how small the movie section is now. The movie section is just, you know, here is movies and then like right over here <laughs> like there's not even movies on that side so this seems like unless it's just been because they've been changing it, it looks like this is how big the movie section is going to be in like the newly remodeled target so definitely a small section but they don't have this stuff out in here these are the things from last week but the only thing that they're going to carry that's new today is uh, the best of enemies as well as um, escape plan like I said escape plan the extractors which is the third film in the series as well as uh, dead trigger that one other than that though I think that's all the stuff they're gonna have so I'm not gonna head to another one because I'm not really expecting anything else but yeah it's kind of crazy this is all all the section is now yeah it's totally been super shrunk down but there is 4k's on this side but yeah it's crazy how much they've shrunk down the section and one really cool thing I want you guys know about is the teaser trailer for the movie that I went up uh, to Vegas to do a cameo in for Full Moon, Ouija's Hollyweed Night, that's directed by uh, Danny Draven. The t teaser trailer is now up now, and the movie's a total throwback to films like Ghoulies. And in the teaser, you see a whole lot of like the Ouija's and the characters and stuff like that in it. Uh, but like I said, the trailer is, you know, the teaser trailer is now up, so check out the link below and you guys can see it. But really can't wait for you guys to see this movie. Really, really had a great time in the shoot. I think you guys are going to really like it. But but it will be out on like full moon streaming in their Amazon channel uh, this October. Into Walmart we go. And fingers crossed they actually change out the actual section and change the stuff out. So we shall see. Hopefully I have to go to a million locations today to see the new stuff. We shall see though. And here today, like I was saying, like the main big thing that came out was Escape Plan, The Extractors. This is the third film in the series. This one is $17.96 for the Blu-ray and then uh, $12.96 for the DVD of that one. Other than that, over here, uh, new wise, I see um, Maya and the White Lion. This one released today. It's one of those ones I don't know anything about. If you guys have seen this one let me know how this one was but this one is $9.96 for that as well as um this is the one they didn't have out at uh, target the best of enemies this is another one the trailer for this one looked pretty good if this one's worth checking out guys let me know if this one was any good or not but this one is $17.96 and i'm pretty sure that there is a blu-ray of that one as well but i don't see that one in here though blu-ray wise but in here though, in the actual section though, they did change out the new stuff. So let's see what's new today. This one here called The Public, which is you know, directed by Emilio Estevez here, which has um, a bunch of people in here, like Alec Baldwin is in here, um, Kristen Slater. I don't know anything about this one. If you guys have seen this movie though, let me know how this one was, as well as A Summer to Re Remember. Um, this one, After the Storm. Uh, I think these are all today. Like this Love, Romance, and Chocolate. Uh, Life with Dog. When the heart calls, see any other ones? I think these are all new. Like run the run for high country. I believe that one was today. Uh, this one I I know for sure. I'm pretty sure this. I don't know. This might have actually been a little while ago. I, I don't remember for sure. The Scott Atkins movie, Avengement. And I think these might have been last month these ones came out. But I know new-wise, though, uh, Nightmare Shark, that one came out today. And that one is uh, $9.96. As well as this one here, uh, Soul, Reap Soul Reaper, which one... Um, don't know anything about this one if you guys have seen this one though let me know how that was as well as uh, Robert Reborn that one released today I think this is like the third or fourth film in the series of these movies uh, also though uh, this one uh, Dead Sight this one released today I'm gonna have a review of this one at the end of this video that one came out today um, these ones were all last month when they changed it out as well as Recovery a uh, Clown Motel yeah so all these other ones here were from the last time around but oh yeah here's one of the 
the other new ones today. Sometimes they put some of the new ones on this side, this little area right here as well. Uh, this one here, uh, High Moon, which is like a, I think I looked this one up, it's like a horror western kind of movie here. Um, another one, if you guys have seen this one, let me know how this was. Uh, this one here, uh, Ulysses, A Dark Odyssey. Uh, this one released today, as well as um, Shadow Wolves. Uh, I believe this one was today as well. So yeah, at least they actually change up the section just so often when I come here, um, especially this location, they don't switch it all out. But this was the one I mentioned in um, in our Target. This Dolph Lundgren film, Dead Trigger, this one was one of the ones today. That one's a $14.96 for the Blu-ray, $12.96 for the DVD. And this movie here with Jamie Lee Curtis, which is a uh, Shot Factory title. So I don't know anything about it. Another one, if you guys have seen this, uh, let me know how this was. This one called An Acceptable Loss. I believe I believe there's a Blu-ray of that one as well. These ones here are an empty spot, so I don't know if these ones were new ones that they didn't put out. Like I think like uh, yeah, Mortal Wars 2, I think was one of the other ones. And then like um can't tell what these ones were. But like I said, at least for the most part, majority of like I'd say like 95% of the new things here have been uh, changed out. Over here TV-wise though, I don't see anything new over here TV-wise though. Into the quality resale store we go. So we'll take a look and see what's in here. All the stuff's in here, like a dollar, uh, two ninety nine each, or four for nine ninety nine. I think it was like maybe a month or so since I was last in here. But I know there's like one random VHS tape up here. I think it was maybe a month or so since I was last in here, and I have found some out of print things in here in the past, and some decent TV and things in here in, in the past as well. This is a weird, like, is this a Children of the Corn soundtrack for I-666? Or is this like just the, I guess it's just the, the uh, DVD in a small case. So that's really weird. This one must have, like, cut the cover and, like, put it in this, like, CD jewel case. That's really weird. But when DVDs first came out, I don't know if any of you guys remember, like, some of the really, really early ones were actually in these kind of cases. Well, you know, in CD jewel cases, like, um, Jumanji. I remember when that was one of the early ones that was in a CD jewel case. And there are a couple other ones, but th that didn't last very long. If any of you guys remember that, leave a comment below. But, yeah, that was sort of how, when they first started coming out, that's how they were doing it. There's a lot of seasons here of Frasier. This is one of those shows, I never really watched that one when that was on. Like, I've seen a few episodes, but never really watched it much. Not a ton of new TV, as far as I can tell. Let's see, though, I see some Blu-rays in here. Like, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. This one, Appleseed. Uh, you know, Alpha Q. This one in here. So there are a couple ones in here. This, for some reason, I feel like might have gone out of print. I have this already, but I'm not sure if, I, if it did or not. For some reason, I thought that did. I might be totally wrong about that, though. There are some random ones that were out of print for a while, like Mean Girls, but then that came out again, and that new uh, one in, like, the purple case. This one here, Bong Water. It's like early Jack Black movie. One of those ones, I remember seeing this a lot when this first came out. Never watched this one. Like I said, though, just gonna look through here and see and if I can find anything out of print or different today. Like I said, we'll see. I'll show you guys if I come across anything interesting. These things here I found are out of print. You know, these are not ones that I need, though, but, like, if you guys are interested, though, they're in here. The Doris Day Show. These all seem to be pretty rare, and they have two copies of season two. I think they're all, like, 20 bucks or something like that. But I don't, I never do like, you know, reselling or anything like that. Everything I get, I just keep, you know, it's just stuff that I'm interested in or like, you know, obscure out of print stuff, you know, just I'm trying to find some things like that, but never really have done, you know, any like reselling. Some people, sometimes people ask that in the comments if I do that kind of stuff. No, never have done any of that kind of stuff. Like I said, though, just looking through here, seeing if I come across anything else in here different day. It definitely does seem like there's some new things in here today uh, from the last couple times I've been in here because sometimes it's like the same stuff a lot but it's definitely looking like there are a couple different things in here today. And this one here is one of those ones that I, I still can't believe has never gotten a Blu-ray release. And it's one of those M. Night Shyamalan movies that like a lot of people really, really dislike. For some reason, I've always really loved this movie. And like, I really do hope it gets a Blu-ray release someday. But it's like one of those ones that I remember I saw this in theaters, how like emotional I got watching this movie and how much I liked it. And I never understood why it had so much negativity. The thing is though with this, I remember though, how much like it was such a shame because like with his movies, I don't know if you guys remember like on IMDb, 
people always would go on there and try and spoil the twists. And I remember like somehow I got this twist spoiled in this movie and I remember I guess how upset I was that I knew going into it. So I was like, yeah, but I always really did like this one, but it's in an old, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, Hollywood video, like one when they were previously viewed casing, so that's kind of cool. But like I said, hopefully one day that one gets a Blu-ray release. And this is kind of a weird thing to see here, The Best of the Bachelor. This is back from 2002. I don't think they've ever put any other scenes of this on DVD or Blu-ray or anything. They, you never really see a lot of TV shows, like reality TV shows anymore, coming to DVD or anything. Like You never see stuff like America's Got Talent or Cooking shows anymore any of that back in like the early mid 2000s they were releasing that kind of stuff all the time but nowadays you never ever really see that at all except for like survivor and and i think that's like one of the only ones that uh as far as i can think of it's one of those you know burn on demand releases but other than that though that's like one of the few like reality shows you really see oh and the amazing race but otherwise in here not really seeing anything else too different though and this past weekend i saw a couple of different films the first one i saw was annabelle comes home which is basically though about the characters of ed and lorraine warren you know who were the ones who were in the conjuring films they were going into the house when the house was possessed and trying to you know get rid of the spirits and everything and you know that's what they do is would, would go around and you know go and kind of like get rid of the, the spirits who are haunting certain things and haunting certain types of items and everything and this one though is about their daughter and both of them are going out of town for this conference so they leave her at home and they have a babysitter come over and the babysitter her friend comes over as well and essentially though uh the one at one point the, the babysitter's friend is like oh you guys should go out and get like birthday items and everything i'll just wait here you know because she wants to go because she found out and heard about how they have this room of all the cursed items and cursed annabelle doll and all like the possessed things and all the kind of stuff that was evil they kept it all and locked in their room of course, she goes in there and starts touching everything, picking everything up, messing around with everything. She ends up opening the the case that Annabelle's kept in that says, under no circumstances, do not open this case. Of course, like she does, lets Annabelle out. And by doing that, it ends up unleashing this horrific you know, curse in the house. And all sorts of crazy stuff happens. And all sorts of ghosts are coming in the house. And they all start seeing crazy things. And it's essentially about them trying to figure out what they're going to do. Because like all the um, like nightmare situations are happening. I actually liked it. I will say, though, I didn't find it, like, super creepy. Like, the Conjuring movies, like, the first Conjuring movie, I thought was so, so scary. Like, there were some really scary images in it. This one, though, had, like, a creepy atmosphere, but, like, like scare-wise, I didn't think it was, like, really that scary. It was it was still, though, really watchable. I still did actually really like it a lot. I liked, the, you know, the second Annabelle movie. The first Annabelle movie, for some reason, I didn't really love that one that much. I watched it again like a week or two ago I was on TV at the gym and I was watching I'm like I don't know this one's just okay this the second one you know I like though this one though I feel like I probably like the best out of all the Annabelle movies because this one was more of a conjuring kind of feel to it uh, the other movie that I saw was Danny Boyle's new film uh, yesterday which was about um this guy he was a struggling musician who was not really having a lot of success and you know uh, his manager is played by Lily James character and She's basically been friends with him for years since they were in like middle school together and she kind of helps him book gigs and everything and he's not really having any success and he just says, I, okay, I'm done with this. I'm going to quit. I'm not, this is, I'm, you know, I'm never getting anywhere with it and I'm not doing well with my shows. No one's coming. I, I'm getting older now. But what ends up happening though is at night, the one right, right when he, he says he quits, something happens and the power all around the world goes out. He ends up getting hit by this bus and then when he wakes up, everybody in the world has forgotten the Beatles. They have have no idea who the Beatles are. The Beatles have been erased from existence. There's also other things that were erased as well. Um, you know, he finds out that as well throughout the movie, what other things were erased. But, you know, the main thing that the movie is about is the Beatles being erased. And because of that, though, you know, he kind of capitalizes on that going, oh, no one remembers the Beatles, but I remember the Beatles. So he ends up going around and like, you know, playing the Beatles music and trying to remember all of it and write it all down and, you know, try and actually have a career and be successful by using their music. And it's kind of like him struggling with what he's doing and like stealing this music, but no one else remembers it, but he does. I actually really liked it. I, I really like Danny Boyle's movies. I think though, when it comes to Danny Boyle's movies, like my favorite one is Shallow Grave. That's the one you don't hear about 
as often. Like, and then I would say probably 28 days later and then train spotting. But for some reason to me, Shallow Grave, I feel like it's just such a great thriller. And one, if you guys have never seen that one, definitely would recommend you guys check that out. But let me know in the comments below though, what you guys saw this past weekend. If you guys got to see anything in theaters or if you guys saw, you know, Annabelle Comes Home or yesterday. But you know, this coming weekend though, I cannot wait though to, you know, see Spider-Man uh, Homecoming as well as Midsummer, which really, really looks cool. But like I said, let me know in the comments below though, what you guys saw, if you guys got to see anything this past weekend. Into Best Buy we go. And like I said though, the two main things that came out today was, you know, Escape Plan, The Extractors, and that one's $17.99 for the Blu-ray of that one in here, and then Dead Trigger, and that one is uh, $14.99 for that one. And over here, though, on the other side, they still have some of the Dumbo uh, 4K steelbooks from last week that came out, as well as the Cinderella, the animated film uh, steelbooks, and the live-action 4Ks as well. And they do have the Best of Enemies here on Blu-ray, and that one's on $22.99 for that one. Like I said, if you guys have seen this one, though, let me know how this one was and if that one's worth uh, picking up. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shot video today. Like I said, not a whole lot of stuff, you know, in stores that came out. Just pretty much those three titles were the main things, and then the new, like, like indie horrors and stuff like that that Walmart got. But if you guys picked up anything today, leave me comments below on you know, what you guys picked up. Also, be sure to check out the Ouija's trail. I have a link for that below this video, as well as let me know, you know what you guys thought of all the new DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that I reviewed at the end of this video. Some really, really cool stuff. So let me know, you know what you guys thought of them, if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. And the first one I got here is from Arrow Video. It's a movie here called The Loveless, which stars Willem Dafoe. This is actually his first movie. I think he did like one thing before this, which wasn't credited, but this was his first movie. And also, he like stars in this movie as well. And this is directed by Catherine, uh, Catherine Bigelow, as well as uh, Monty Montgomery. But Catherine Bigelow, you know, directed tons of stuff like The Hurt Locker and lots and lots of different movies. But my favorite of hers that she ever did, which was a couple years after this, was Near Dark. Like that's probably like, I, I, I always think when I, to say like what's my favorite vampire movie i feel like near dark is tied with lost boys i feel and they were both actually came out the same time but i feel like both of them to me it's like really hard to pick between which one i like more because i feel like they're pretty much like them both the same but this movie here though is set in the 50s and this is about about william, Def william defoe's character who's this biker guy who's kind of like um driving kind of just take that like, going on his bike kind of through the middle of the country and kind of like the middle of nowhere and he kind of comes and stops at this town and a group of his friends as well who are bikers kind of stop off in the town as well and it's kind of like um this small town where it's a town where like you know no one really you know, it's kind of one of those places where unless you live there you're really not there you know it's like one of those things no one really is coming there to visit much it's not not that kind of place it's kind of like you live there and those are the kind of people only people who are actually in this small town but when he comes through there though he really stands out and the people that he's friends with as well they're all standing out because they're like they're biker guys and this biker gang and all that kind of stuff and they're kind of looked at and it's kind of odd and it's essentially though they're in this town and they're not really wanted there and William Defoe's character starts to kind of like this girl there in the town and it kind of it's all about all the kind of problems that go on there it's actually a really really interesting movie William Dafoe though for his first you know starring role his first pretty much his first movie because I think it was Heaven's Gate he did right before this but I was looking online it said uncredited for that so this was his first credited role but like he was always William Dafoe is always really good like I, I feel like one of the movies I saw recently for, from him that was like one that I totally missed was a movie called Light Sleeper which I absolutely love that movie but this that was from like um, I don't remember I think it was like early 90s it was one of those real underrated William Dafoe movies you don't hear about too much but I've loved him in everything I feel like he's always really really good it was really really good in this movie as well but this one on here uh, feature wise though this has a brand new 2K restoration on here for original camera uh, negative on here really really great transfer on this one also has on there on uh, here uh, brand new uh, interviews on here with the co-writer co-director Monte Montgomery as well as on here there's some interviews on here here, brand new interviews with William Defoe, as well as a number of other cast members on this one. Uh, interview on here, though, with um, the production designer and the director of photography on this. Also, a audio interview on here with the music musician uh, Eddie Dixon. Uh, ex extensive uh, image gallery on here, which includes on-set photography, storyboards, production uh, documentation, as well as a theatrical trailer on this one. 
Also in here though, there's also a booklet which has some pictures from the film and like production facts and stuff like that about the movie. But really, really interesting, you know, movie. If you guys have not seen this one, definitely recommend you guys check this one out. The next one here is from um, Shout Factory. This is a really cool collection here. This is a uh, Space 1999. This is the complete series. And this stars uh, Martin Landau. And this is one of those shows I had always heard about. And a lot of people were always saying it's a really, really cool science fiction show. I had never seen it before. So I was really, really interested in checking this one out and, and getting to watch this. So it was really cool and really happy to get to review this one. Essentially, though, this is about Martin Landau's character who is like... Um, kind of just got the job of going to like the moon and, and the moon though is kind of where they're doing uh it's kind of like they get rid of like on the moon like there they get rid of like waste and like you know space waste and like sort of stuff like that and there's all kind of like uh, radioactivity and radio uh things with all like all sort of radiation and stuff on this moon because they have all these canisters of, of radioactive waste and all this kind of weird stuff on this moon and because of that though and they're not sure if that's what it exactly is or it's something Something else going on but there's been a whole lot of people who have gotten sick and died up there on this moon base so he's kind of coming there and he's already knowing that there's like problems there and there's issues going on so he's going there to sort of try and kind of figure out too like what exactly is happening and he's realizing too that there's some odd sort of cover-ups and he's like certain to discovering these sort of things and like they when, right when he's there in the first episode he's like discovering though about this waste and you know kind of wants to get it off of there but then like what ends up happening though is like this ship that's trying to remove some of the waste ends up exploding and then the moon base gets like thrown out of orbit and like the whole base with them all in it is like thrown in, into like like off the earth axis and everything it's like something really weird happens and because of that though they're up there and they can't get back to earth and it's sort of like weird things are happening they're going into other dimensions and weird certain things and like weird kind of like uh, space characters and stuff kind of come into play in the show and it's like I was actually a really really cool show I really love too the one thing that they do in this when they, the show opens though it shows like the opening of the show and, and it has this crazy music music you know super super like uh, you know um because this show is from 74 like real like 70s kind of music that comes on and like shows you like a teaser like a 30 second teaser of like what's happening in you know the episode that you'll be watching so it shows you like little highlights before you see it so it's kind of a cool thing because normally when they would do highlights like that it would be like last week you missed this but no they they actually show you like pre-highlights of what's going to happen in this really quick you know montage and they put together i don't know this is a really really fun show but this here though I'll show you guys a look inside it has the complete first and second season here and then inside though here's a look though at the discs really really cool set also though picture quality you know picture wise these look really really good amazing transfers on these ones really glad that I saw these for the first time on blu-ray and you know shot factory did a great job you know cleaning this one up you know cleaning the show up also it's in this cool hardbound case and also though it has a special features disc here which has though uh, also a there's a booklet in here which is an episode guide which talks about you know the episodes in here that are in the set and also has you know some pictures and stills and stuff like that so really cool they included an episode guide in here but feature wise though this has on here though a brand new interview on here with uh, actress uh, Barbara Bain as well as uh, in, in, you know uh, into into the um, uncertain future interview with actor Nick Nate, uh, no, Nick, I mean Nick Tate, as was well uh, new uh, brain behind the destruction interview with director on here, Kevin Connor. It has Moon Vase, uh, Moon Merch, a tour of Space 1999, uh, as well as uh, his vintage interviews, pr uh, production material, featurettes. So lots and lots of features on here. Really, really great set. And like I said, a really, really fun show. Super cool science fiction show. Really great. Like the look of this show is so cool like the sets and everything i don't know I, I really really like this show if you guys have seen this though let me know what you guys thought of this uh, the next one here is from lion's gate and this is um also an a24 title this is a movie which stars uh robert, robert, you know robert pattinson as well as uh, maya goth and andre uh, andre benjamin is in here and it's called high life and this movie was so cool. This is a movie, though, it's not for everybody, but I really, really got into this movie. This was such a cool, super trippy space film. And, like, I don't know, I, I always, you know, Robert Pattinson is always doing, like, lately some really, really cool movies. I hope all goes through with him doing Batman. I actually really, really want him to play Batman. And if you guys have not seen him in, like, some of his recent films, like Good Time and stuff like that, you've got to watch it because he is, like, such a great actor. And, you know, um... 
even the Twilight movies, you know, for what it, they were, what he was supposed to do in those roles, he was really good in that part, you know, what he was supposed to be doing. Uh, this movie, though, is about his character, and it kind of, um, it starts with him at, it, up in space in the spaceship. It's up, he's up there with his baby. You're kind of wondering, okay, what is going on here? You see there's no one else on the ship. He's up on there with his baby. And then it cuts to, you know, like... Um, kind of showing what had happened and like you know without saying too much the ship that he was on and this is not a spoiler or anything this is like in the first 15 minutes this happens it's basically though there is some sort of uh, experimentations going on on this ship and it's it's his Robert Pattinson's character and the people there are all kind of like um criminals and they have their reasons for being there and they're sent up to space to do these sort of like reproductive kind of like fertilization kind of experiments up there and that's really all you can say about the plot is there's this this is what's going on up there and it's this real gloom sort of setting and it's got it and it, everything too it's one of these movies where there's so many different things that mean something there's so many things that are like um you know sort of metaphors for things and you know the they show like, you know, everything is supposed to sort of ha has a deep meaning to what it is. And it's one of those things, too, where you can kind of pick your own view on what certain things mean and what certain visuals mean and what, kind of what they're implying with certain things. And the director, too, she went in a really interesting direction with the way she was implying things and not showing certain things and leaving a lot of things to the imagination. And like, I don't know, I, I really, really got into this movie. This was, like I said, this is not going to be a movie for everyone. It's a high art, kind of has a Terrence Malick kind of vibe to it a little bit a little bit like a tree of life vibe but in space it's like got that sort of vibe to this a little bit but acting wise really good Maya Goth though you know, Mia Goth I'm always a fan of her she's always really good she's really good in this one as well this has on here though some featurettes on the making of the film here and also one talking about the look of this movie because it has a really really cool look in this spaceship and like I don't know I, I said I can't say too much about this one I definitely want to watch watch more of Claire Dennis's other films. I think this is the first movie that she did in English. All her other films were in French, but definitely want to watch more of her stuff. But one of these ones, too, highly recommend you guys check this out. Really, really cool. And also on the ship, too, there's like this like garden which is like these, they're growing things on, and they have like certain kind of like things that are growing that are like sort of otherworldly, like the way, I know they're kind of like, you know, actual things, but the way they did it, and the way they made it look, has this real otherworldly kind of vibe, but really, really cool, like absolute must-watch movie here. And the next one I got here is from Lionsgate as well, and it's a movie here called The Professor, which is starring Johnny Depp. This one I literally just finished watching now. I really, really like this one a lot. Essentially, though, this is about Johnny Depp's character, who's a professor at this school which he's worked at for years he's kind of a really respected you know teacher at this school which he's been at forever but essentially, on the very beginning of this movie, goes to the doctor and finds out that he has lung cancer. And he's like, sort of like, really confused how he has lung cancer because he doesn't smoke. But the doctor says, though, that the lung cancer has spread. It's spread to his back, and it's really not good. And the doctor says that, you know, with treatment, you, you may live a little over a year. Without treatment, you maybe have six months. And he's telling him, you know, he needs to get his affairs in order. He needs to tell his family. He needs to tell the school that he works at about everything. And it's essentially, though, about... John Depp's character like kind of like having this sort of like thinking of kind of the regrets of his life and you know he wants to go on a sabbatical and go and like kind of see the world but he wants to you know still has to teach at the school before that can come into play and hopefully it will happen but he also is like in this crisis of he doesn't really want to tell his wife and daughter and his wife is played by Rosemary DeWitt and his daughter is played by Odessa Young you know who was recently in Assassination Nation she was really really good in this movie but essentially though you know he goes to try and tell them but then he like is like doesn't really want to tell them so it's essentially about him kind of keeping this to himself and then at the same time at school he kind of is you know since he's there teaching still he doesn't want to have students in the class that don't want to be there and that are not interested in actually, you know, English and writing and you know, all that kind of stuff. So he says, like, if you're not interested in doing this, get out of this class. And if you are wearing these sweatpants, get out of this class. He has all these different reasons. So then there's only a few people left. And he's like, you know, in this class, you know, I'm going to have you read one book and I want you to, you know, tell the, you know, give your summary of the book. And then if, you know, if you do that and I, and I you know, basically if you do that, you get like a B, but if you teach, you know, a 
something from your summary and you know analysis of the book, you get an A. But essentially, though, what this movie's about, though, is Johnny Depp's character when he finds this out about himself that he's dying. It's about him having like the inner ter inner turmoil of like the thoughts about like his regrets, as well as him sort of trying to do things in his life more in a way, as well as trying to sort of reach his students. And also, though, he's going through all sorts of stuff with his wife, because his wife is having an affair with Ron Livingston in the movie. Ron Livingston's character, who's like his boss. You know, Ron Livingston was, you know, from um, Office Space and a bunch of different stuff. But it's just kind of like all these things going on in his life at the same time. But a really, also very, very sad stuff in this movie as well. I thought Johnny Depp gave a really good performance in this movie. I really, really liked this one. I thought this was actually one of my favorite Johnny Depp movies I've seen in a long time. I thought, like I said, like I said, I thought he did a really good job in this one, and really it was very emotional. A lot of the stuff that was happening in this movie, but on here though, this has a making of of the movie on there, feature wise. And the next one here is from Universal. It's a movie here called Little, which stars Regina Hall. This is basically, though, about her character. She runs this, like, tech mogul company, which is doing really, really well. They're kind of in the middle of, like, working on big deals and, like, trying to, like, do this merger and everything. And, you know, she's, like, a kind of person who, when she was a kid, she was kind of, like, not popular in school. She was kind of made fun of. And because of that, though, you know, as an adult, she doesn't really accept any jokes. She's real serious. She doesn't like kids. She's just kind of, like, a no-nonsense kind of boss. And one day, though, there's this food truck in the office, and, and she's, like, really mad because everyone's there eating this food and everything. And she goes down there, and the one kid who, who's, like, the you know, the guy who runs the food truck, his kid is in the building downstairs, and she's kind of messing around and stuff. And she gets in an argument with her, going, what are you doing in here? Why is this kid in here? And this kid's like, oh, I wish you knew what it was like to be a kid. I wish you, were, you know, were little. And the next day, Regina Hall's character wakes up, and she's little again. She's the version that she was when she was 13 years old and was like kind of the nerdy kid who was picked on, who didn't have any friends. And now, you know, her assistant ends up, you know, fi finding out about this, you know, that, that she, you know, has become little again and she's like not believing it at first and she's kind of trying to figure out exactly how to, you know, get her turned back. And she makes her go to school and like, because like she doesn't know what to do with this kid and like social services are coming around. And so basically though, Regina Hall's character as a kid has to go back to school and kind of go through it all again as, as much as she had such a horrific time before she's in there again and it's kind of her dealing with school and all this kind of stuff it was actually a really really funny movie there's some really really funny stuff that happens in here um on here though it has a gag reel it has a bunch of different featurettes it has a feature commentary track on here but i would highly recommend you guys check this one out i actually thought this was a really fun movie the next one here is from paramount this is the 4k ultra hd edition here of you know the pet cemetery remake here and this like I said, this is the 4K one. I really love the cover on this one. Now, this one, though, I will say, I absolutely love the original Pet Cemetery movie. Like, that was one of those movies that I've watched throughout the years so many times. You know, Fred Gwynn, in my opinion, like, makes that movie. You know, Fred Gwynn, if you guys don't know, played, you know, Herman Munster and the Munsters. And, like, he was in lots of other things as well, but, like, the Munsters was always, like, my favorite thing he was in then, you know, Pet Cemetery. But, like, he really made that role. And, you know, John Lithgow's character, you know, John Lithgow comes in and plays his role in this one. And I thought he did a good job. You know, is a different kind of way that he played him. But like I said, this is a remake. But I re always really love the original movie. I also really love the sequel. You know, it starred Eddie Furlong. You know, hope and Clancy Brown. Like, hopefully someday that one comes to Blu-ray as well. I've heard some talk that it might be. I'm not sure though. But hopefully that does because I love the sequel as well. Now this one though, it takes a much different take. It's a little bit more a uh, serious in tone, and it deals with the subject of death in a much more serious kind of way. You you know, um, some of the stuff, though, I didn't think was as cool in this one. And they changed around one big thing, though, about, you know, one of the things that the character that dies in the original, which was a huge, you know, the big thing about the movie, they changed around who it was in this one. And I'm not going to say it in case you guys haven't seen the trailers or anything, um, even though the, a lot of the trailers were showing that aspect. But, you know, I, I, if you guys don't know this story, though, it's about this family that moves to this new house out in the middle of the country. And, like, the, the doctor there, the, the, guy, the husband there, was he was a doctor. 
And for one reason or another, he had to move, and he goes to this medical school now, and it's a much smaller position for him. He's not going to make as much money. So the family is kind of in a weird situation. But when they're there, though, he finds out that, you know, right behind the house is this pet cemetery. And, you know, um, what ends up happening, though, is the one day their, their cat dies. And, you know, um, you know, Jonathan Lescow's character tells them about how beyond the pet cemetery is the is this Native American burial ground kind of area where, you know, if you bury someone, you know, or something, they come back from the dead. And, of course, though, you know, they bring back the cat, and then that causes the whole downward, you know, spiral of things going really, really wrong, and what they, who, you know, who they bring back next, you know, because of what happens. But like I said, it's a very different, you know, I didn't think it was as scary. Like, the one character in here, which was a character, which was um, this kid that died in a car accident, you know, got hit by a car in the original movie. Like, I didn't feel like his character was as, like, scary in this one, it was like gorier and everything, but it wasn't like as scary. Same with like the sister character, the one sister character who like the, you know, the mother was like, you know, had trauma from, from the past because her sister had this, 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 this disease and stuff that she was going through. Like, um, that stuff I didn't think was as scary in this one either. It like still, I would still say this is worth watching, but the, like to me, nothing can top, you know, the original movie. Like I just, cause like I've watched that one since I was like a kid, even though I shouldn't have probably watched that. I always really liked that movie. Movie. But still, like I said, it's a very different, a little bit of a darker tone and everything, like I said. Still worth watching, though. But on here, though, it has a whole bunch of features, though, that are on the uh, Blu-ray disc. It has alternate ending in here. It has deleted and extended scenes. It has on here, though, a bunch of, like, featurette stuff on this one. So lots and lots of features. Uh, 4K-wise, though, this looks really good on 4K because it's a very, very dark and gloomy movie. And with 4K, the big thing I've talked about in the past is the HDR, which is the high generic range, so the contrast levels and everything. So this movie is a highly contrast film. So really, really looks great. You know, it definitely boosts the levels of darkness and all that kind of stuff. Also, 4K always makes the picture brighter as well. So it, it works in both levels, but really does look good on 4K, though, if you guys have a 4K capacities. The next one here is from Warner Brothers. They sent her a free uh, copy of this one to let you guys know that this set is available. This is a really cool collection here. This is the complete series here of the show Gotham. Because I've talked about this show in the past, uh, the past releases here. The, the one in here that's brand new, though, is... Um, um, you know, Gotham, the fifth and final season. This is a show, though, that I have not seen all the... I'm going to show you guys a look, though, at all the discs, but this is a show, though, that I have not seen all of the episodes, you know, throughout the years. I saw most of them, though, a good majority of them, because I used to watch this show a lot at the gym, like when I was working out. This is one of those things that I was watching a lot. There's also a lot of character actors that pop up in this show, so it's a really, really cool cast, and it also has on here, of course, like, you know, it, you know they build up to having the villains in here, like, they come out, and, you know, like the, um, you know, the Catwoman, the penguin you know and and the riddler is in here and it kind of like is like you know leading up to a lot of like the early forms and early renditions of them of course you know the early form of bruce wayne it is in here as well i will say though i'm really looking forward to seeing you know a uh, batgirl when that starts because i always you know a fan of you know um ruby rose so really interested in seeing how that show is so definitely looking forward to that. But in here, though, like I said, this is the complete series of the show. And the show had, you know, ran for five seasons here. And here's a little look, though, inside. Here's a look, though, at Gotham, the complete first season here. And Gotham, the complete second season. The complete... Um, third season here as well as um, Gotham season four and then Gotham season five as I said like I said this is the brand the newest release here and all these ones they'll have lots of different features they have a bunch of different you know comic con panels they had deleted scenes uh, featurettes on here on this season though this one has on here an in-depth uh, death um, exploration your favorite DC villain villains in here it has some featurettes in here Gotham season five best, best moments a New York Comic Con 2018 panel um, and also has on here um, unaired scenes so lots and lots of features on these ones and if you guys don't have all the uh, seasons of the show really really cool set here to have them all together in a complete collection here like I said this is Gotham the complete uh, collection here and the next one here is from the Criterion collection and this is a uh, Hedwig and the Angry Inch this is a movie which I saw this movie when this first came out I think this released in 2001 I, I believe this was 2001 I, I don't think I had seen this movie since then and I remember really really liking this movie I remember too you know 
know, I was watching like a lot of like the Independent Spirit Awards and the Independent Awards and stuff like that. And I remember this one had like so many different nominations for this movie when this first came out. And John Cameron Mitchell, who directed this movie, also stars in this movie as well. And this one, um, you know, it also was like I think one of the early like think of my, one of Michael Pitt's like first movies, I believe, or one of his very early films, like right around the time that he like he was doing he did a lot of movies around that time. He did like Bully as well right around this time. This is basically though about the character of Hedwig and you know it's, she's a transgendered you know singer and you know um Essentially, though, it's kind of all about her story about, like, you know, what had happened to her in her past and, like, um, sort of family kind of problems and, like, relationship problems that she had with this her, her past boyfriend. And it, kind of, it all kind of comes in because this is all done as a, you know, rock opera musical film. And it's basically, though, about Hedwig's character. And she's, like, in this band who's kind of traveling around, going from, like, club to club. And they're, they're, they're in the band, they're having, like, all sorts of, like, inner turmoils and inner problems. And, you know, Hedwig's character, she's really upset, too, because, you know, um, Michael Pitt, you know, um, they show how they had this, like, relationship relationship and you know he had stole you know all, all these music that you know Hedwig had wrote and kind of didn't give her credit and he's became he's now become this huge rock star so that that's like the what's going on throughout this movie as well is all this kind of stuff because of Michael Pitt's character becoming this huge rock star and to kind of find out more about this as it goes along but this is a really really well acted movie John Cameron you know Cameron Mitchell also recently directed um How to Talk to Girls at Parties which stars Elle Fanning which I really like that movie a lot as well. I really like his stuff. He also directed um, a couple other ones. I think Short Bus was one of the ones he did like like a couple years after this one. But really, really like his stuff. On here though, this has a brand new 4K uh, digital restoration on here. Really, really great transfer on this one. It has on here though a brand new, um, you know, uh, you know a. Um, what was the new one on here? It, it had a thing with them all coming back together, like a um, you know a reunion on here with John Karen Mitchell as well as the um, you know um, I think it was some of the members. Who was on here? It was like some of the cast and crew members coming back, you know, talking about the movie now and like the production. Because before, you know, this actually started out originally as an off-Broadway uh, play. And they kind of talk about that as well in here, how it started out. It also has on here deleted scenes with commentary track on here, a theatrical trailer in this one. It also has on here a new conversation with the composer and lyricist on this one, a documentary from 2003, uh, t you know, tracing the development of the project. So lots and lots of features on this one. And also it has a um, booklet in here. And I can't show everything in here. Some of these pictures I definitely cannot show, especially the one on the front. Uh, but yeah, there's some of the ones, like I said, you definitely cannot show all the ones in here. But it, it talks all about, though, the production of this movie. It's got a whole bunch of different, you know, stills from the movie and you know uh, facts and everything like that about it in in the booklet and also in here though here's a look inside of the disc but definitely one if you guys have not seen this movie an absolute another one that's a must watch one of those movies that i really liked and kind of had forgotten how much i liked this movie because i had not seen this movie in so many years the next one here is from Severn Films. This is one I was really interested in seeing. You know, I was really excited to, to review this one. And it's a movie here called Night Killer, which is directed by Claudio Ferguson. You know, um, you know, and he, he's credited by a different name, and it's Clyde Anderson. But Claudio Ferguson, you know, uh, for uh, Claudio Fergresso, you know, who famously is known for directing Troll 2, which you guys know how much I love Troll 2. Like I discovered Troll 2 as a kid, you know, right when it first came out. And I never, you know, I discovered it before it became like the best worst movie or anything. I just watched it as a kid and genuinely loved the movie and was like renting it <coughs> renting it all the time again and again and again but this movie is basically though about and they also Bruno Mattei came in and you know shot some different stuff so like the opening in here which is like a dance sequence with the killer and everything was stuff that he shot because they needed to like add some more gore and stuff to this movie and there's and there's a really interesting interview on here with the director though talking about how at first he didn't like that and then looking at the movie now he kind of sees why these scenes that he added like the scene that he added and some of the gore he added kind of needed to be in here because Claudio Fergresso was trying to make like a kind of like a super art film like a Fellini kind of movie is what he was talking about and like you know he wanted to be more like Alfred Hitchcocky and all these kind of things he was talking about and like he didn't want like gore and that stuff in it but essentially though this is about this killer who's going around killing women 
and this one woman who gets attacked by the killer and she she ends up surviving and because of this though she kind of hasn't can't remember anything she can't remember like um you know her own name she doesn't remember her kid or anything and right when this happened like when she leaves the hospital though you know she goes and tries to like attempts to commit suicide by this by the ocean and then this guy ends up you know stopping her and it's essentially though like he takes her back to this hotel and it's kind of like what's going on and it's like really crazy and there's like crazy scenes in here which were some of them were stuff that, that you know they were added in later and stuff to this movie but the mask and stuff the killer's mask is this crazy mask there's some really crazy music in this this is all shot in virginia beach but i really like this movie like it's not like perfect or anything and it has some kind of like sort of peculiar acting in some of it but one of these ones i would if you guys like are a fan of the director's other movies like i said troll 2 and a bunch of other stuff he's done throughout the years i i like this and it has one like i hear like i said an interview on here with the director kind of talking all about the production and kind of his vision of this movie also a writer uh, interview on here with the writer of the film as well as a trailer but you know picture quality wise though looks really really good on blu-ray just a really really fun movie in in italy too they actually called this movie texas chainsaw massacre 3 that was like the one title in italy it had uh the next one here is from movie zing and this is also movie zing and, and this is a random media title this is a documentary here called Hot Dogs the Movie. And this is a documentary about this restaurant that was in, um, was this in Chicago, I believe? I believe it was in Chicago, and it was, you know, a really popular, they closed in 2014, so they were doing this documentary, like, right before it closed, and, you know, it was a super popular hot dog stand where they had, like, you know, regular kind of hot dogs, but as well as, like, exotic kind of hot dogs, like exotic meats, the kind of stuff you would never really see at a hot dog stand, and it was, like, it was, like, you know, um, he started getting famous because Anthony Bourdain, you know, late Anthony Bourdain, you know, he went there and documented for his show. And also, like, um, it was on, like, uh, some travel channel shows. Like, I think it was on Food Paradise and stuff. And kind of got this huge popularity. And it's also hugely popular in Chicago. And there would be lines. There would be, like, three or four hours of people lining up to get into this place. And, you know, the owner was Doug. And he always worked there. And he was always there. And it was his place. And this is all kind of a documentary, though, about the place, the people who come in there kind of the people who work there as well as though you know his reasoning for closing and kind of showing the you know as they were closing what they were going through in the lines and people who got tattoos and all this kind of stuff it was actually like I said a really really interesting documentary I always like the you know food kind of documentaries and that kind of stuff as well but like I said this one here is uh, Hot Dogs the movie the next one here is from Movie Zing as well and this is a Lion's Gate uh, title and this is a burn on demand release of a movie here called uh, Outlaw like I said, this is a Burn On Demand uh, Blu-ray. There's also a Burn On Demand DVD of this one. It's a movie here called Outlaws. This is a like a biker gang movie about this guy who ended up going to prison. And he, I think he was in there for like five years. And he was like the head of this biker gang. But like as at, when he left, though, it was essentially, though, about the person who was left in charge of it. And how like... Um, sort of what had happened, why he was, you know, in there when the person who was in charge, but the person who was in charge, his brother, had kind of gotten into this trouble, and then, like, he got, like, in, dealt with, like, um, this other gang, and they were kind of, like, um, if the, he didn't do something and kind of join them on this drug thing, you know, he was going to end up getting killed, and as the guy gets out of prison, though, you know, he kind of comes back into all this that's going on, and he doesn't want to get into all this and doesn't want to, you know, have anything to do with this drug stuff, but he, the one guy knows that if he doesn't do it, who you know, who's in charge of the gang while he was in prison, he knows if he doesn't do it, his brother's going to get killed, and it becomes this whole big thing. And it's kind of like too, since he was in prison all this time, he's sort of being questioned, like you know, kind of like he's out of touch because he was gone so long. He doesn't really know the way things are now. He doesn't know the way things are with this group. So it's all kind of about certain people in the gang are kind of like not siding with him, and you know. Um, all this kind of stuff in here, you know. They also also in here though. This stars Abby Lee is in this movie. Who, who, you know, who was in Mad Max Fury Road, and she's been a uh, you know uh, a bunch of different stuff. Always really liked the things that she's in, but a really really interesting movie here. Like I said, this is called Outlaws, and the next one here is from um, RLJ Entertainment. It's a movie here called Dead Sight. This was a different, interesting take on zombie films. This is basically though about this guy who wakes up in the back of a hospital truck, you know, by the back of an ambulance. 
sense. And he's, you know, his eyes are covered over and he's like, can't see or anything. And essentially, though, he doesn't, you know, know exactly what's going on. And he's kind of confused why he's back there and he can't see and his eyes are covered over and he tries to look and he can't see or anything because something had happened to him. But he sort of is, like I said, very confused about what had happened. And, you know, essentially, though, he can't see, gets, finds his way out of the ambulance, and then he's hearing all these crazy things out there, and there's these zombies outside, and it's like a zombie outbreak going on. So he's kind of not sure what's going on. He's trying to kind of navigate around why these zombies are out there coming after him, and he can't see, and they, he can barely, it's all blurred over and can hardly see at all. And it's like, it's just a really nightmare situation. But he manages to call, get, you know, get the call out, and ends up this police you know officer she comes and it's kind of about them working together trying to survive through this whole zombie outbreak that's going on like i said it's a very interesting different kind of take on the whole zombie thing and an interesting aspect too about this guy who's blind and everything and trying to find out more and more about him as this movie goes along like i said this movie here is called dead sight and the next one here is an Australian release, and this is uh, from ViaVision, and this one is region-free, so you guys can watch this one no problem in any U.S. Uh, DVD or Blu-ray player. You don't have to have, like, an all-region player or anything like that to play this. This will play perfectly fine in U.S. players. Same with the next one as well. But this is a fantastic journey, the complete series. This is a show that was from the 70s. It's from 1970s, I think it was 96, 1976, 1977, I believe. And this has never been released on, you know, DVD before, ever. So this is the first time this has ever come out. And it's basically, though, it's like a really cool concept. It's about like, um, these people who end up on this boat and they're like going out and they're going to be going through like the Bermuda Triangle and they see this like kind of like greenish fog and, and they end up going through this fog and all of a sudden though when they go through this fog and it's about the group of people who are on this boat they just kind of all wake up and they're on this island and they like don't know where the boat went and this is like a weird island in the middle of like nowhere and as they're there though they see this one guy and like he's kind of lurking around and everything and like it's basically Basically, though, where they are is sort of like this strange time warp where, like, um, it's like there's like medieval kind of characters that come into play there. There's all these different kind of characters they come into that in, in this area, and somehow it's like different times. It's like the 1600s and like all these different time periods. Why these people are there, and they're kind of going around, and it's like a super futuristic kind of vibe, and, you know, real 70s as well, like the feel of this. But it's kind of like um like pre you know sliders. This is way before sliders, way before quantum leap, and it's got like all those kind of feels in here and it was actually a really really fun uh show i really really like this I, like i said i still i just started watching through this now but you know this is actually really really cool if you guys have ever seen this show though leave me comments below what you guys thought but i feel like this is one of those kind of like lost shows like i don't know if this one ever like really played much on tv in the u.s you know ever since this originally aired like i really don't know if it had like a lot of reruns or is ever on like you know nick at night or something i I really don't know if you guys remember this or when this ever re-aired you know with if it had like a lot of reruns or anything let me know because I had never seen this before this one here is from Viavision as well and this is uh, the Lizzie Borden uh, ultimate collection here which has you know the uh, Lizzie Borden movie that you know which stars Christina Ricci as well as the TV series so the Lizzie Borden you know Chronicles was the TV series and then it was Lizzie Borden took an act was the movie and it was you know um, the miniseries though was kind of like um, the um, it's kind of what happened to, because if you guys don't know the character Lizzie Borden, you know, she was, you know, had killed her parents with an axe. And it was kind of like all this mystery behind it because, like, um, you know, they couldn't believe at this time that, that a woman would have done such a thing. And there was, like, all the court cases, and the movie deals with all the court cases. The Lizzie Borden Chronicles, though, deals with the aftermath of, like, what happened to her after and what she was going through after all this stuff had happened to her. And Christina Ricci, though, did a really, really good job, on, you know, in the show. But this is really cool to have this whole collection here, though. It Feature-wise, though, it has deleted scenes and a gag reel on this one. But if you guys have not seen this one, this is also uh, region-free, so you guys can watch this set no problem. In the U.S., you guys do not have to have, a, like I said, a region-free play or anything. This would play in all uh, U.S. Uh, DVD and Blu-ray players. And the next one I got here is from Scream Team releasing. It's a movie here called Exposure. This is basically, though, about this couple who goes out to, you know, this cabin in the woods, they're out there like on this trip and everything but like um 
you find out though in the beginning of this movie that the boyfriend is saying how like um weird stuff had happened in the past because like his you know um grandparents were there in this cabin and that's that's who owned this cabin and like she he's like telling his you know girlfriend about what had happened out there and how the one day the grandpa like wandered out into the woods and like kind of went crazy and was acting really strange and then a little while later you know his grandmother she kind of went crazy out there and died in the woods and it was kind of like due to something weird had happened to them out there so you know that like something is going on out in these woods because right when they're there though uh, you know his girlfriend though she's out there you know, kind of like she's like painting out there doing paintings and everything like that. And she starts to kind of hear weird things. And like it, within her own painting too, she sees like weird stuff going on in the painting. But essentially though, it's just pretty much what's going on is they're out there and you know something had happened to the guy's grandparents. So you know like that something weird's going on out there. It's essentially like building up to what's going to happen. And it does you know, go in like crazy directions of, you know, what happens. It's really one of those things you can't say too much without spoiling anything in this movie. But, you know, Lynn Lurie is in here in a cameo playing uh, his grandmother in this. But I actually really like this one. I thought the, um, both the actors in here too did a really good job on this one. This one has on here feature wise, it has a, a whole bunch of different commentary tracks on here. It has cast and crew commentary tracks on here. I think there's like three or four commentaries in total on this one. And then there's also special effects behind the scenes, production stills, uh, theatrical trailer. Trailer, VHS uh, uh, trailer also has uh, reversible artwork on this one as well but the reversible artwork kind of like gives you like a little bit of a spoiler so I won't show that and the next one I got here is from High Octane Pictures, and it's a movie here called Landing Lake. This is basically, though, about a group of these people who are out in the middle of the woods near this lake and stuff, and they're out there kind of working on this communication thing that kind of communicates with this satellite. But when they're out there, they see, like, this plane go down, and they go there to kind of investigate, and it ends up being like there's something really strange going on out there and going on near the lake. So it's kind of like... um weird sort of things start happening to people that are out there and they kind of are there's like almost like a force field around spots too so they can't like leave so it's essentially like they're they find themselves you know trapped in this area around this lake and everything and they're sort of trying to figure out exactly what's going on and throughout the movie you find out more and more about like sort of what's going on here and then like weird sort of things like i said start happening to the people that are out there and there's some really weird kind of characters and stuff that are out out there as well it was actually kind of a cool science fiction movie Movie here uh, and the last one here though is from uh, high octane pictures it's a movie here called uh, crisis hotline this is basically about this guy who's who gets a job working at this crisis hotline which is for a L lgbtq crisis hotline and he's been there for, i think he's only been there about a week and he's kind of like um sort of almost thinking he's not going to continue to stay there because like people who are calling in they're mainly like calling in about like not really in crisis situations they're just kind of calling to complain about their troubles and like complain about oh somebody did this and their boyfriend did that and like like not really any real crisis type thing so he's kind of like i feel like i'm i'm wasting my time it's not i'm not really helping anybody here it's just kind of people are here to tell me their troubles and their problems in their life not a real crisis situation that they're going through but then that one night though that he, when he's there um, he ends up getting this one call and it's this guy saying that you know I, I'm uh, you know taking these pills and and then he's like the guy's like oh thinking I finally someone is finally calling with a crisis but then he starts the guy starts to kind of tell his story about what led him to in the situation that he's in and like what led him to with his with his kind of how he met his boyfriend and then it kind of goes into this area where he's telling the guy on the crisis hotline that he's going to kill these people and he's going to he's playing this whole thing out so it's basically this guy is on the phone talking to him trying to figure out what exactly is happening here how to help this guy how to stop what's going to happen here and he keeps on finding out more and more and more through like flashbacks and stuff about you know what is going on here and what led it to all these situations and everything pretty interesting movie here on this one though this has a uh, cast and crew interviews as well as a um commentary track on this one but anyway though guys that's all for the review portion of this video thanks again for watching subscribing and i'll see you guys later